Hey everyone, welcome to Instrumentation Lectures. Last lecture, we had discussed about the basics of pressure measurement and so how a piezometer works. We will continue our discussions from there and in this one, we will talk about YouTube manometers. So, let's start our lecture. YouTube manometer is a glass tube bent in U shape and as you can guess, it is from this U shape the name YouTube manometer is derived. In some textbooks, you might see this figure for YouTube manometers. Don't worry about that because both are functionally the same. Now, we have a container or pipe which has a fluid and we need to find the pressure of fluid at some point. For that, we will connect one end of the YouTube manometer to that point by drilling a hole in the pipe or container. Also note that the other end of the YouTube manometer is open to atmosphere. That is open to atmosphere. That is it is at atmospheric pressure. Till here everything is same as the piezometer we discussed in the previous video. The major difference is that YouTube manometer also contains a manometric fluid like this. Also, the manometric fluid should satisfy some properties. That is, it should be denser than the fluid whose pressure is to be measured and the manometric fluid should not mix with the fluid in the pipe. Having said this much, let us now discuss about the working of YouTube manometers. Uh, before going to that, you should know that the YouTube manometer can be used to measure both positive pressure and negative pressure. That is, it can measure fluid pressures greater than the atmospheric pressure and pressures which are less than the atmospheric pressure. So, let's discuss them in cases. The first case is when the fluid pressure is greater than the atmospheric pressure. In this case, the fluid pressure will push the manometric fluid downwards and as a result, and as a result the manometric fluid will move upward in the right limb and attain a new equilibrium position at a new height. Now let's draw a reference line or datum line. Preferably we choose the datum line to pass through the lower level of manometric fluid at the interface of two fluids. Now we need to find the pressure at this point that is Pa. So this height is H1 and this height is H2. So let's equate the pressure. We know that the pressure of fluid is same at same levels. So the pressure at this point will be equal to the pressure at this point. Uh, let me show you why. Let's name this point as x and this point as y and this height as h3. Now let's calculate the pressure at the lowest point, say z. So p z will be Px plus rho m d h3, where this rho m is the density of the manometric fluid. Similarly, Pz can also be written in terms of pressure in the right limb. Therefore, Pz equal to Py plus rho m d h3, because this height is also h3 itself, right? So, equating these two equations, Px plus rho m g h3 equal to Py plus rho m g h3. And we can see that these two terms are equal. Therefore, cancelling both these terms gives us Px equal to Py. That is, pressure at this point is equal to pressure at this point. Okay. Now, in the last video, some of you had doubts on how this expression came into picture. So, let's clarify that. To make things simple, let's take a cube. And the pressure exerted by this cube on the base will be P equal to force per unit area. And the force will be the weight of the cube, right? Therefore, P equal to mg by area. Using the relation between mass, volume and density, we can write this mass as density into volume. Okay. And this volume can be written as 
base area into height right so the equation modifies to p equal to rho a h d by a cancelling a's loses p equal to rho g h this is how this equation came and this is called hydrostatic law we are using this law in the case of fluid column that's all okay now let's proceed to find the pressure at point a so let me delete this part first pressure at point x equal to pressure at point a plus rho 1 d h1 where rho 1 is the density of fluid in pipe and similarly we can write py equal to that is pressure at point y equal to pressure atmosphere because this end is open to atmosphere therefore open to atmosphere so the equation is p atmosphere plus rho m g h2 where rho m is the density of manometric fluid and we have already found that px equal to py therefore we can equate the rhs of both the equations which gives us pa plus rho 1 g h1 equal to p atmosphere plus rho m g h2 therefore the pressure at point a pa will be equal to p atmosphere plus rho m h2 minus rho 1 h1 and this is the equation for absolute pressure if we need gauge pressure we will equate pa atmosphere equal to zero and gauge pressure will be pa equal to g into rho m h2 minus rho 1 h1 and this is gauge pressure so that was the case for when fluid pressure is greater than the atmospheric pressure by the way while deriving these equations we made an assumption that the manometric fluid will not mix with the fluid in the pipe but suppose we need to measure the pressure of fluid that reacts with the manometric fluid that is we cannot let the fluid in pipe come in contact with the manometric fluid in that case we had a sealing liquid as buffer in neat slim on top of the manometric fluid the sealing liquid must be lighter than the manometric fluid but heavier than the fluid under test equal quantities of the sealing liquid is added to each limb of the manometer so that the two amounts stand balanced so there is no change in the pressure equation let me show that to you let h be the height of the sealing fluid since both limbs have same height of the sealing fluid this height is also h and let this be the datum line writing the pressure equations pa plus rho 1 g h1 plus rho s g h where rho s is the density of the sealing fluid equal to p atmosphere plus rho s g h plus rho m g h2 where rho m is the density of the manometric fluid you can see that this term is present in both lhs and rhs so we can cancel out this which gives us pa equal to p atmosphere plus g into rho m h2 minus rho 1 h1 and this equation is same as this equation so you can see that the addition of sealing fluid with equal quantities in both limbs does not affect the pressure equation let us discuss about the second case now that is when the pressure of fluid is less than the atmospheric pressure in this case the atmospheric pressure will push the manometric fluid towards the pipe like this and as a result a new equilibrium height for the manometric fluid is obtained so let us draw the datum line now and the unofficial rule we follow is 
datum line is drawn on the lower level of manometric fluid and let this height be h1 or let's say h2 because we used h2 for the other case and we need to find pa and this height is h1 writing the equation of pressure at this point pa plus rho 1 g h1 plus rho m g h2 where rho m is the density of the manometric fluid and rho 1 is the density of fluid in pipe will be equal to uh, this is atmospheric pressure therefore p atmosphere this gives us pressure at point a equal to p atmosphere minus g into rho 1 h1 plus rho m h2 and this is the equation for absolute pressure for gauge pressure we simply equate p atmosphere equal to zero and the equation is p a equal to minus of g into rho 1 h1 plus rho m h2 you can see that p a is negative now that is the reason why we use the term negative gauge pressure for pressure smaller than atmospheric pressure it is also called vacuum pressure that is pressure smaller than the atmospheric pressure is also called vacuum pressure so on a side note side note suppose the gauge pressure is given as pg equal to minus 0.3 atmosphere that is simply gauge pressure is given as minus 0.3 atmosphere however if someone asks what is the negative gauge pressure in this case that is negative gauge pressure we will drop the minus sign and simply say equal to 0.3 atmosphere that is from the term negative gauge pressure itself it is understood that the gauge pressure is minus 0.3 atmosphere let us now do a question based on what we studied so we are given that we have a liquid of specific gravity 0.9 flowing through a pipe the manometric fluid in the manometer is mercury the heights of liquid columns are marked in the figure okay it is given as 6 cm and 10 cm from the datum line find the pressure of fluid in pipe so the first thing we need to do is identify the case that is whether the pressure of fluid is greater than atmospheric pressure or less than atmospheric pressure and here you can see that the height of manometric fluid is higher in the right lip therefore this is case 1 that is pressure of fluid is greater than pressure of fluid is greater than atmospheric pressure for this case the pressure equation is pa equal to p atmosphere plus g into rho m h2 minus rho 1 h1 where this is h1 and this is h2 now we need to know what is the value of rho m and rho 1 we are given that the specific gravity of liquid is 0.9 and we know the relation density of fluid density of fluid will be equal to specific gravity of fluid into density of water so our fluid density will be 0.9 into 1000 kg per meter cube that is 900 kilogram per meter cube is the density of fluid that is rho 1 value to find the density of manometric fluid we are given that the manometric fluid is mercury and the density of mercury density of mercury is 13600 kilogram per meter cube approximately and this is rho m now substituting the values in this equation gives us pa equal to atmospheric pressure is almost 101325 pascals plus gravitational acceleration is 9.81 into density of manometric fluid that is 13600 kg per cube into h2 which is 0.1 meter minus 
the density of the fluid that is 900 kilogram meter cube per meter cube into height which is 0 0.06 meter and this one evaluation uses pascals or newton per meter cube so this is the answer if you have any questions or doubts leave them in the comments below and i will try the best of my knowledge to answer them or some other viewer can also help you. also please don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss any future videos in the next video we will discuss about single column meter thanks for watching and have a nice day